Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode, and we'll be talking about professional procurement. You know, I've been studying that lately, and I, re- I thought this would be a good topic for us. We haven't dug into this on Eco Ask Why. So today I brought in the guru, Amanda Prochaska. She's the founder and chief wonder officer at Wonder Services. So how you doing, Amanda? I am fantastic today, and I love that you're talking about procurement. I, I know, I know. When we got connected, so I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the shout out to Sam Gupta. He connected us on LinkedIn, and I told Sam, I said, "Look, I want to learn about procurement and more about the industry in general." And he pointed me straight to you. We were able to have a great uh, conversation, and and that led us to here we are. Yep, absolutely. And I can't believe that um, that we connected so quickly and at, at so many different levels. Like mm-hmm. procurement is a wonderful thing to be talking about, but building relationships is even better. Even better. Absolutely. Yep. Hands down. And for procurement in general, because for me, I, I've, I've called on industry for years. So I've always dealt with procurement offices, but I never really thought about, you know, how you define procurement. So maybe just to get us started with this, with, with this procurement conversation, how do you define what procurement actually is? So I, I'm going to give you two definitions here. When okay. I started in procurement, I used to tell people we buy stuff. Like really at the end of the day, that's what we um, mm-hmm. traditionally have done. So we would go out and work with suppliers and negotiate contracts and make sure that we're buying the best goods and services for companies. Now, I would say that we're adding value through our supplier network to mm-hmm. everything that a company does. So we're, we're tapping into that third party capability to bring the best value to our organizations. I love it. I love it. So yeah. now wonder services. So your procurement group, is that what you guys do? But what, what do yeah. you do there? Oh, what do we do? No. Uh, so wonder <laughs> services, we're all about digital transformation within procurement. So if you can think about all of the, um, you know, enhancements that are being made with technologies across the board, procurement mm-hmm. has a large opportunity to tap into all of that wonderful new tech that's coming online. And so I help organizations think through that and then also drive adoption because you can have the best technologies out there, but if no one's using it, then you're not going to get the results that you're expecting. That's awesome. So it sounds like yeah. it's it's a constantly evolving and, and never a dull moment at Wonder Services, right? Oh yeah. Every every day is a new day and that's what I love. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Now for, for procurement, the, the profession in general right now, what are the two, one or two top priorities that you're hearing people talk about? So first thing is inflation and supply risk. So, and those kind of go hand in hand in my mind. Um, There's obviously a lot of inflationary impacts. And when you're looking at how are you trying to contain costs and get that best value, that is always top of mind. And a lot of work has been gone, you know, put into place around how do we secure supply with all of the dynamics in the market today. So first and foremost, that's, that's a lot of what's going on. The second large um, area is digital transformation. I hear it all the time. People are on that journey in various ways. That journey really never ends. Um, There's always new tech coming out and um, people are really intrigued around how do we leverage technology in a way that simplifies what we do, helps drive better um, decision making, and then um, allows us to continue to expand the role of procurement. Mm Mm-hmm. I just think it's so interesting that you call it digital transformation because, you know, on, e- on Eco Why, you why know, we've been talking to engineers and, you know, a lot of technical type topics. And we've actually, I think we have a couple episodes. I know we have one episode that it was literally titled <laughs> Digital Transformation, but it's talking about from the plant floor, right? And, right. and, and, and this, the technology is just on the floor. Everything's being connected and they're pulling all that data out and they're making better decisions. But you're making digital transformation in the actual the, the buying process. Right. Absolutely. And that, that goes with how do, how do suppliers interact with procurement? How do our internal stakeholders interact with procurement? And how can we really simplify that experience and increase user experience across the board? Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. That, to your first point about you know inflation and supply chain risk, things like that. So has that been like within the last two years, has that been the big transformation in the procurement space? Yeah, it it has. And it's been interesting because when you would typically talk to a procurement professional, it would be really cost focused, right? So how how are we driving the best cost point for the company? But over the last two years, it's really transformed into 
how do we secure the best sources of supply and build our supplier relationships in such a way where we can guarantee or at least mitigate risks around securing that supply? And so there's been really innovative things going on. I was talking to someone the other day and she's like, I used my, one of my promotional uh, supplies providers to become a 3PL for us so that we could secure supply more often for what they, the unique needs that they had in their business. And uh, it was just a really innovative thought process. And that's more and more of what's coming out of procurement is how do we, how do we solve for this very complex supply chain um, and all the risks that are associated with it right now um, by leveraging the expertise in our, uh, through our supplier networks. Mm -hmm. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm almost, you know, this is just a simple, my simple mind, which you have to be very careful when I start throwing out things that come in my simple mind, <laughs> but it goes from, I, I'm envisioning from cost reduction now to risk reduction. It sounds like there's a big jump there. Yeah. Risk reduction. And then I would also say like value adding, if, mm. if you can, the, the person I mentioned earlier, who is now using their, a, a supplier, a promotional goods supplier as a 3PL, she was able to reposition her, um, her company in such a way in the marketplace where they were able to remain competitive and serve their clients in such a better way than their, their, you know, who else was doing it and maybe not managing that risk as, as effectively. So they were able to really gain market share because of what they did with mitigating that risk in, in supply chain. That's really cool. Now, yeah. I mean, that's getting to, to, to make the impact on the, on, on the end user. So I'm curious from your standpoint, what are some of those types of solutions that you're seeing out there that, you know, the, the best of the best, what, what are they doing to oh. actually, you know, change the game? So for me, it, it really comes down to two things. Okay. Looking at supplier relationships differently. So often in procurement, it was that like harsh negotiation where it was, they win or we win and nobody, nobody really wins at the end. Mm -hmm. That whole has changed so dramatically over the last two years. And, and really looking at how do we leverage the expertise of a supplier and understand what that is so that we can um, reduce that risk, gain market share, um, have a better experience to the, for the customers, drive sustainability initiatives, whatever that might be. Um, diversity initiatives too. So that that is really transformative um, within procurement. On the other side is how do we take out a lot of the day-to-day -day transactional work um, that is consuming us so much um, and automate that, find digital solutions for it, um, create a better user experience for the, all of those that are using procurement services so that we can focus on those more strategic activities like those supplier relationships. So it's mm. kind of that, that twofold uh, experience there. For sure. Now, where, yeah. where, where did the suppliers come in on that? So far as that day-to-day -day automation or is, are the things suppliers can be doing to help that process? Oh, absolutely. So the best suppliers are bringing ideas to the table, innovative ideas that are taking their relationship to the next level. Okay. Like they're showcasing their overall capabilities. Now, so that's where a lot of the relationship time should be spent is really bringing in those new ideas. On the day-to-day -day transactional side, though, what you're going to see more often, like particularly in the space of your audience and where they work in, you're going to see a lot more punch out catalogs and, and stuff like that transactionally, mm -hmm. where the day to day transaction might not be as um, I would say you're not picking up a phone call or emailing someone. You're, it's more of an automated process. And then where you're spending your time with your suppliers is really on how can we drive that innovation? How can we leverage the relationship in different ways to expand and um, create uh, new opportunities for everyone involved? Cause I mean, that's where the value's at. I mean, right. you know, it, it makes sense. I mean, so I'm, I'm curious cause I saw a, uh, completely random. I saw a study yesterday and it was put, it was put out by a distributor group and they were talking about engagement, how suppliers engage with industrial end users and how often they want to see them, you know, because it comes yeah. down to, to, to our suppliers really bringing value. And I, it was a, a staggering percentage of they only want to see a supplier it was either quarterly or once a year 
And I was like, you know what? They're not bringing value then because if they're bringing value, they're going to want to 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 see them on a more regular cadence. But I'm curious from your standpoint, do they do do end users? They still want to see that supplier, or is it a self serve? Was where it's all going towards, or where is the line? I think you you hit the nail on the head there. If it's a transactional relationship and that's all it is, mm-hmm. then yes, they're not going to want to see that supplier very often because you have these automated processes where you don't need to, as long as that supplier is reliable, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they don't have supply shortages and all that kind of stuff. But if you are bringing that value and you're thinking of innovative ways to solve the, the procurements, procurements issues or solve your customers' issues, mm-hmm. then they're going to want to see you more often. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're, yeah. if you're, you're that salesperson, you're listening now and you've been serving, you know, the industry for let's say 25 years, and now you're telling them you need to be innovative. What does that actually look like? Where do they, what conversations do they need to be having? Okay. So I, I, I might be very different from a lot of people in this, but I, I'll, I remember sitting in procurement and listening to pitch after pitch after pitch. And at, at one moment in time, they all started running together. They were all the same thing, right? So right. I could even guess what slides were coming up next in the sales presentation because they were all the same. Right. Like, there's going to be a logo slide. There's going to be a location slide. Like, at the end of the day, I would encourage anyone in the sales role that's listening to this right now to move away from the standard slide deck and remember that there's a person on the other side of the table. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a person who wants to be engaged. They want to be heard. Ask really great questions is a great starting point mm-hmm. about how, what, what, what incentives does that procurement person have? What are they struggling with? Mm-hmm. What is in the day to day? Because like the example of the promotional supplier, did they ever think that they were going to be a three PL when they engaged on that contract? No, like they provide promotional goods, <laughs> right? But because they had the relationship and, and, um, they, there was uh, that knowledge around how they could jointly solve a problem. They were able to expand their business and really help dramatically um, in that situation. So remember that there's somebody on the other side, ask really good questions and try to actually build a relationship with that person. Like not, not just to check off your sales numbers, but legitimately try to build a relationship and get to know them a little bit better. And you will stand out heads and tail above every most people that are walking through the door. That's awesome. Now, now I do know from calling on engineering for years, it, if you go in and you can speak the language oh. to, of the engineers, it, it, it puts you just, it automatically elevates you and you can have a different type of conversation. I'm assuming that's the same type of thing with procurement. So where do you go to learn the language? <laughs> okay. So there's a, Follow people like me on LinkedIn, first okay. of all. <laughs> there you go. The go to show us. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there are a lot of people on LinkedIn that are procurement professionals that are just sharing amazing information. There are other um, avenues like there's ISM, which is the Institute of Supply Management. They have great courses on procurement. Um, you have uh, following Procurement Foundry is another really great organization um, that talks a lot about procurement. So I would research what are those procurement associations, but I think more, more often you're getting some great knowledge, great podcasts that are out there that are in the supply chain, supply chain and procurement space. If you just follow, follow uh, the people who are talking about it on LinkedIn. That's awesome. I, I recently yeah. filed, started following a few groups and we'll, we'll put a few of those groups in the show notes as well, as well as obviously uh, ways to connect directly with you, Amanda, because we need people to be following you and the amazing stuff you're doing, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> of course. That's great. That's great. Now, you, you, you've talked about the, the, the digital transformation, and that also comes with technology. You know, you have to be, you have to be you know, capable to be able to, to actually support these new services. So from a technology enablement standpoint, you know, where do we need to be investing? If we want to start serving industry in the future, where do we need to be investing now to make that happen? Um, if you don't have a punch out catalog, as an organization right now, it's almost a, a non-starter. Mm. Um, so if if you don't have that, I would be asking why and trying to get that done. Um, it's typically associated with any kind of e-commerce implementation that you would be able to have a, a punch-out capability. But if you think about how 
procurement's automating the procurement process. Mm -hmm. Um, Punch out catalogs are a huge time saver. They allow you to showcase what you're offering um, day in and day out. And, um, and it just is a really simple way to get um, purchasing done. So I, I would highly recommend that you start there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it it sounds like that's, like you said, that's the baseline to play the game. I mean, that's going to be it. Yeah, absolutely. Now for procurement, like again, I, I know I keep going back to engineers. It's just my background. So in the, the engineers, they have all these metrics, you know, OEE and all these different things that they measure. They want to make sure that, you know, they can tell how this machine's run, running. What are the procurement metrics? I'm just, I'm very curious on what they would be. Oh, so they're changing dramatically over the last couple of years. Okay. The, the, the primary metric has traditionally been cost savings, right? Mm-hmm. You, you, you want to talk to a procurement organization that didn't have cost savings on the list, if not at the top of the list. It's probably still on the list somewhere, mm-hmm. um, but we've added such things like um, supply chain reliability. So how reliable are the, the procurement organization or the suppliers that are providing services? How reliable are they um, in providing those? Uh, do they have a lot of outages? Are they shipping late? Are they on time and full? That kind of stuff. Um, you also have um, value creation. So mm-hmm. top line value creation. Um, is coming online more and more. Um, and uh, you there's also um, cash flow metrics. So mm-hmm. how, how quickly are we paying? Are we um, you know looking at our accounts payables and trying to manage that effectively? Mm-hmm. And then there's new things coming online like sustainability and, and um, supplier diversity. How sustainable are our purchases? Like, um, are they reducing water consumption? Are they reducing energy consumption? Are they recyclable? I mean, there's all kinds of things when it comes to sustainability. Are they locally sourced so we don't have the transportation um, impact um, behind that? And then the supplier diversity, are, are we buying from diverse suppliers that are representative of our client base, right? Mm. So the more that you can reflect how your customers are thinking in your supply chain, the more that you um, can understand your customer better. So that is a, a large um, uh, new metric that's coming online for procurement. That sounds pretty cool. Now, the, the, the one that jumps out to me just because of the background is supply chain reliability. And, and because it sounds like there's a lot of data points that really point. So, I mean, you're looking at, I guess, like late shipments and yeah. I mean, what, what types of things? Give me some more there. Yeah. So uh, late shipments, um, partially shipped shipments. Okay. So for instance, you couldn't fill the full order. You can only fill half, a part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, you, um, it, was it shipped on time? So was there a delay in the shipment? Um, so those are huge metrics right now as you're looking at supply chain risks um, for any organization that's, uh, that has been impacted by that over the last couple of years. So is it like a scorecard or something that procurement keeps on these? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. And um, so, and they could do it at the aggregate level. They also sometimes take it down to the the supplier level. So you oh. can see by supplier, are you, how, how often are they shipping in full or have right. delayed payments? They could also go down to the level of getting feedback from the engineers that are using these suppliers. Yeah to see if um, that relationship is there, if they're adding value, et cetera. That's pretty cool. I, I'd love to see an example of that sometime. That, that, that's yeah. a really neat uh, metric, it sounds like, to measure for sure. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. I'll tell you what, I've learned so much about procurement. I don't, I don't know how long we've been recording, but it's, it's been, I, I feel like I'm just information overload, but I always <laughs> I always like to ask the why, uh, and for Eco Ask Why. So, so Amanda. Yeah. You know, why is understanding procurement so critical for manufacturing and those that serve industry like us in the future? So for me, it's if you really want to be effective at solving the need for your clients, you need to know procurement, right? Procurement is a large part of that decision making process. They're transforming the way that buying is happening within these organizations. You need to know what's on their mind, what incentives are driving them. How are you going to be measured at the end of the day so you can be more effective at um, creating those innovative solutions? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Now, where where can people, if they want to, to connect with you, where should they go? What website? Where do you want them okay. uh, checking out? Yeah. So first of all, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. Love the relationships that I've built out there. That's how I met Sam um, mm-hmm. along the way. So uh, look me up on LinkedIn first and foremost. Otherwise, you can check out my website, wonderservices.net, and um, learn more about what Wonder Services is all about. That's awesome. We'll sync all that up in the show notes for you listeners. And Amanda, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. What a great conversation with Amanda talking about procurement. You know what? When I went into this, I didn't know a lot about procurement. I've learned so much from her directly and just talking with different procurement professionals. And I tell you what, the game has changed. And when she said digital transformation, you know, how many of us out there, Eco SY listeners, would automatically go to the plant floor? Well, it's not just the industrial plant floor. Digital transformation has made its way into procurement. And to serve that industry, to serve procurement in the future, you have to be there. So I can't thank Amanda enough for all the information that she shared on this episode of Eco Ask Why.